exercise is medicine video three, take home message two. So the take home message for this third video is it is essential, right? let me repeat, it's essential to minimize sitting and screen time. Why? Well, because there are now a number of studies showing that prolonged sedentary time, prolonged sitting independently uh, of uh, the weekly physical activity, exercise training is associated with negative health outcomes. As you can see here in this meta-analysis published in Annal of Internal Medicine, um, all-cause mortality, 14 studies, cardiovascular mortality, cardiovascular incidence, cancer mortality incidence, diabetes incidence, or they are all increased by prolonged sedentary time. So in this nice uh, study published in Lancet 2016, uh, uh, as you can see in this graph, uh, there is a, a combinatory effect of daily sitting time. So basically, if you are completely, if you are not doing any type of physical exercise uh, and you are uh, sitting uh, for, for a prolonged time, you have the highest mortality. So in this sitting time, so we increase all cause mortality, no doubt. It. But the study suggests that. Uh, I mean, suggest because these are, are epidemiological studies uh, based on, again, a meta-analysis of 16 plus six studies that as you increase your uh, weekly moderate to vigorous physical activity, the detrimental effects of prolonged uh, sitting time is uh, mitigated. So in people who are in the most active people that are exercising 60 to 75 minutes for, of, uh, uh, per day of moderate intensity exercise, the effects of prolonged sitting, uh, sitting more than eight hours per day are minimized. They are not zero, but they are minimized. However, when in, in other six studies, uh, they look at watching TV for three or more hours, even in those who have been, they are very active, 60 plus minutes of exercise per day, uh, the uh, detrimental effects of watching TV for more, more than three hours are not uh, reduced, suggesting that you need to have a balance between exercising regularly and reducing sitting time, okay? Uh, to re-emphasize this concept, let me show you the data of this very nice study published in 2020 where they randomized people to three conditions, three arms. One is just sitting all day long without exercise. The second arm are people who are exercising half an hour in the morning and then they are sitting for the rest of the day. And then the third group are people who are exercising for half an hour a day. Uh, and then they have frequent, every 30 minutes, they are doing three minutes of light intensity walking. So they are breaking their sedentary uh, every 30 minutes for three minutes. Uh, and uh, they measured a lot of metabolic parameters, but I'm just uh, uh, discussing this insulin area under the curve. So this insulin sensitivity, and I'm going to tell you in, a, in, a, in, in another in, a, in, a, in another video I'm going to do in the future why this insulin sensitivity is very important because is highly correlated with aging and cancer. So you want to have this insulin insulin sensitivity, this area under the curve for insulin, I'm gonna explain you how to measure it uh, as low as possible. And as you can see here, compared to the totally sedentary people, those that have been, uh, those that uh, have uh, exercised half an hour a day every day, they had a reduction by of 33% of the insulin area under the curve, but those that on top of exercising half an hour a day, they also uh, had 
frequent three minutes breaks, uh, they had a, a 45% significant. So there was a significant improvement uh, compared to the half an hour only uh, in those with the frequent breaks uh, in sitting. So the message is, yes, you have to do your daily exercise, formal exercise, even if you know, I'm going to explain you different techniques to break this exercise. But you know, the idea of uh, incorporating every half an hour, every hour to break your sitting in your office, in your home, is essential as these studies on mortality and cardiovascular cancer and diabetes mortality and uh, incidence, the risk of developing those are uh, suggesting and as you know more physiological parameters here comparing the combination of the two in a randomized clinical trial showing an additional benefits of breaking uh, of these frequent breaks in seating. So example, how can you do it? What does it mean frequent breaks? So these are just examples that I normally use in my daily life. First of all, if you are in your office and you have to call someone, just stand up and, and maybe walk in, in, in the office. Uh, or if you're watching TV, uh, you can uh, move around, you can do some exercise while you're watching TV. A good idea will be to buy a, a, a bike and put it in your in your in your in your uh, in a room where you have a TV and you can you can bike uh, while you're watching the news or you watch a video. Another one is uh, to uh, buy one of these standing desks. So you know you you alternate some sitting with some standing while you are writing or doing something on your computer. Or now there are these. Uh, work surface uh, treadmills you know some of my friends they they acquire they, they bought some of these where you know they they, they can put your their, their computer they can do their zoom conference call while they are gently walking instead of sitting uh, another <clears throat> another technique that i typically use in my office every half an hour an hour i stand up and i do some uh, uh, resistant exercise by using my body as a weight, you know, some push-ups and, you know, I using my chair at the desk, you know, to do some uh, push-ups or some triceps or some other exercises that, you know, they, they, they activate some of the muscles. So you, you can incorporate some resistant exercise during your daily routine and, and stretching exercises. Another example of how you can break, you know, this prolonged sitting, if you need to speak to coworkers, walk, walk, and, and every half an hour, an hour, you go and you walk to them, you know, you don't call them on the phone, but you go and walk, you walk with them in the other office on the other floor, uh, right, and, uh, or, you know, every half an hour, an hour, you know, you can go to the bathroom, and then, you know, instead of going back to the office, you can do, like, few flights of stairs, and as I'm going to explain you, there are studies now showing, you know, if you do very quickly, two or three flights of stairs, you have beneficial effects on multiple uh, metabolic molecular factors like LUT4. I'm going to explain what it is uh, in a few videos. But again, do as much as you can uh, flight of stairs in your building in your, uh, where, where, where you're working or at home. Uh, you can take a quick walk around the block every hour or two. Uh, and most importantly, that's what typically I do with my students or with my postdocs. Uh, instead of having meetings uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a conference room, uh, uh, if I have to discuss data with them or projects, I'll, I'll, I'll invite them to go for a walk. You know, if the day is a beautiful day, of course, if it's not raining, I'll go on, on campus and I walk around. And, you know, if I have to talk for half an hour, 15 minutes about some projects or some data, you know, we can, we can uh, do it by, by walking uh, around the campus. So these are just some examples and, you know, you can be creative, but again, <clears throat> the important concept, the take home uh, message for today is that 
not only is important to uh, regularly exercise, but it's also extremely important to do frequent breaks during the day. Don't sit for hours on the chair in front of the computer because this has negative effects independently of your exercise routine. As always, thank you for listening.